Welcome everyone. See some of you, your audio is still connecting, so I'll give everyone a moment. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is the um, House Bill 1477 Steering Committee. Um, so tonight's deliberations amongst uh, the steering committee members for uh, the crisis response improvement strategy. I'm Jamie Strauss-Clark, your facilitator. Uh, welcome, everyone. Before we dive into our meeting objectives and agenda and welcome, I want to take just a moment to go over the technology that we're using tonight. I know most of you are very familiar with Zoom, so I'll make this really quick here. Uh, Nicola, if you or Liz, if you can announce the slide. All right, so we have two slides for this, and many of you have seen this a lot before. The first one is for our steering committee members. I'm just going to remind steering committee members uh, to keep your mics on mute, uh, but your video cameras on if you can. That just helps us engage with you and facilitate with you. And this is just for our steering committee members. If you're a member of the broader Chris committee or a member of the community tonight, uh, I'll have a different slide for you. So mics on mute, keep your video cameras on. Um, we are going to use the raise your hand function. So if you could advance this again, there we go. Raise the, your hand function to let me know uh, if you want to make a comment or ask a question. So you just click on that reactions button and then you'll see raise your hand. And then as a reminder, if you'd like to see all the other um, steering committee members at once, if you go up to that speaker view button in the top right and click on it, and then click on gallery view, you'll be able to see everyone for chat tonight. Uh, we do have the chat open. Uh, steering committee members, feel free to send a chat to me if you prefer to communicate something in written form rather than um, speaking it aloud. And um, if you have any technical difficulties, you can send a chat to Brittany. Uh, Brittany Thompson, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, forgive me, everyone, I have a little cough, so I'm gonna try to keep it from slowing me down tonight, but Brittany Thompson would be the one you would go to for any technical issues. Uh, let's move to the next slide, please. All right, members of the public and uh, general Chris committee members who are here tonight, if you could keep your mics on mute and your cameras off, and that just allows me to be able to better see our steering committee members and facilitate their conversation. Um, so mics on mute, cameras off, uh, and then again, that suggestion about putting it on gallery view if you wanna be able to see everyone. Uh, for chat, I'm gonna ask, I'm not able to respond to chats from our guests tonight because I'm gonna be focusing on the conversation with um, Chris committee members. So if you have a comment or feedback or a question, if you could go ahead and send that to the uh, project web, the project email at HCA and I'll ask one of our team members to post it in the chat to everyone right now so that our guests can see that. Uh, that would be the best way to make sure that whatever you have to say is being heard. All right. Um, I also want to mention tonight, we have two ASL interpreters with us. They're going to be switching off 15 minutes a piece. Um, and I don't see them pinned on the screen here. Uh, right now we have Michael Kosanovich, uh, who's doing ASL interpretation. And so if you don't see him on your screen, you can scroll and find him and then uh, pin him to your screen if you need to use that. Uh, Andrea Medlock is our other ASL interpreter and she'll be taking over in 15 minutes from Michael. They'll be switching back and forth uh, throughout tonight's, um, tonight's meeting. Also, we are recording and we will be posting the recording to the HCA web pages following this meeting. So if you aren't able to stay through the whole time or you have a friend or colleague who would like to see this, that recording will be up there. Uh, I'm going to pause now and I'm going to turn it over to uh, Michelle Roberts with Department of Health, who's going to offer a welcome. Well, thanks, Jamie, and good evening, everyone. I'm so glad we could find time to be together today. So um, Michelle Roberts, the Acting Assistant Secretary for the Prevention and Community Health Division at the Washington State Department of Health. I use she and her pronouns. And in the programmatic area um, that I support here at the State Department of Health is our suicide prevention and our work to support the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline um, call centers. 
So I want to start today just um, again welcoming and thanking steering committee members and members of the public who are joining us tonight. This work is about systems change um, and this kind of change really necessitates having honest and difficult conversations about what is not working in our system and what we can build from in our system. So I want to really acknowledge and emphasize that there are many aspects of our system that need overhauling to achieve our long term vision for a human centered, effective, compassionate crisis response system that saves lives. And that there are parts of the system that are working and producing hopeful outcomes. Moreover, there are thousands of dedicated people doing good work across our state and making personal sacrifices to help others. So it's that energy that we want to build on and that commitment that brings us all here together. We've heard a lot of feedback from Chris members that we need a better um, support system for all of these people too. So we're supported in, as we do this work. I know this process can feel very laborious for many of us given the urgency of our task and the urgency of needs that are in our communities. It takes a lot of work to lay the foundations for system change. And we're not all privy to the sort of details of what's happening in all the different be um, places behind the scenes. At the CRISP committee meeting last week, our state agencies, including myself, shared some of the updates about the work that is happening. And I hope that offers some reassurance that their things are happening to propel um, this work forward. At today's meeting, we'll be finalizing the high level subcommittee work plan, which is a key milestone and will help us lay the foundation for our work ahead and aligning work by the state agencies with input by the subcommittees and the CRIS committee. Finally, I wanna emphasize the importance of working collaboratively and in partnership even as we're having honest and direct conversations. If we're gonna do this, we need to do it together and continue to learn from and understand all the different um, perspectives at the table and all the different parts of the system. So thanks so much um, for everybody. I'm excited to have some conversation with our steering committee today and um, appreciate the public members joining in as well. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, and now I'd like to ask Mark Snowden to offer our land acknowledgement tonight. Thanks, Jamie. Um, I work at Harborview Medical Center, which is owned by King County and operated by the University of Washington. I acknowledge the Coast Salish peoples of this land, the land which touches the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. I add that we are on the traditional land of the first people of Seattle, the Duwamish people, past and present, who continue to pursue their federal recognition. The tribes invest heavily in exemplary natural resource stewardship programs. I want to thank the tribes for this stewardship. I encourage everyone who lives in the Seattle area to learn more about these efforts and to be equally conscientious stewards of the land and supporters of the tribes. Thank you, Mark. Um, I just wanna take a moment to um, have each of our steering committees introduce yourselves and your role. Um, and then I'll also ask uh, uh, Betsy to introduce herself as um, a key staff member too. So I'm gonna call on you in the name, in the order I see you on the screen. Uh, but I also want to acknowledge before we do this that Senator Dingra, who is one of our steering um, committee members, is uh, it is legislative session right now. And so uh, both Senator Dingra and Representative Orwell are doing double, triple, quadruple duty. Uh, so she may not be able to join us because I believe she's on the floor tonight, uh, but she has communicated with us her um, her support for the, the pieces that we're going to be discussing tonight. So. Um, please, uh, well, we will miss her, but, uh, but really appreciate the work she's doing uh, at the legislature tonight. So I'm going to go around and, and call on each of our steering committee members, ask you to introduce yourselves, your role, and your pronouns. And uh, Michelle, I know, you, I know you did a brief introduction, but if you could just remind everyone who you are, that would be great. Yep, Michelle Roberts, I'm representing the Washington State Department of Health, and she, her pronouns. All right, and then Carrie Waterland. 
Hey, good evening, everybody. Carrie Waterland. I am the division director of our Division of Behavioral Health and Recovery at the Healthcare Authority, and I am here representing the Healthcare Authority, and I use she, her pronouns. And then Representative Orwell. Thank you. I'm Tina Orwell, state rep from the 33rd Legislative District. I use she, her pronouns. I do want to let you know we're on dinner break and we're going back to the floor, but um, so I need to apologize. I probably need to leave about uh, uh, 7.25, but uh, glad to be here. Thank you for being here, Representative Orwell. Amber Leaders. Hi, Amber Leaders. I use she, her pronouns. I am a senior policy advisor in the office of Governor Inslee. Vipasha Mukherjee. Hi, Bipasha, she, her pronouns. I'm part of this um, committee as a person with lived experience in mental health. I'm also a community advocate for the South Asian um, people on mental health and also a long-time crisis line worker. Thanks, Bipasha. And then Mark Snowden. Hi, I'm Mark Snowden, a professor and vice chair in the Department of Psychiatry and the Chief of Psychiatry at Harborview Medical Center, and I use he, him pronouns. And then Betsy, would you introduce yourself, please? Sure. Hi, my name is Betsy Jones, she, her. I am the managing principal for Health Management Associates in our Seattle office, and I am leading the, um, the support for the 1477 implementation on behalf of the Behavioral Health Institute. Thanks, Betsy. Um, I just want to let folks know, um, I just got a note that uh, our other ASL interpreter, Andrea, is having some connectivity issues, so hopefully she'll be able to come back. Um, and Michael, I think, will do his best to, to manage for both. Uh, thank you, Michael. You're a hero. Um, but, but just wanted to let folks know in case they were um, concerned about that. Liz, if you could put the um, agenda slides back up, I'll just walk us quickly through our agenda tonight. Oh, hi, did you ask about me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry? Okay. Um, all right, everyone. So tonight our objectives for the steering committee meeting are as ever to continue laying the foundation for collaboration. We have a few updates relevant to the steering committee that, that will be shared shortly. Uh, and then two big pieces of business. First of all, confirming an ad hoc work group to advise the steering committee on on a vision for the crisis response system. And we'll talk a little more about that shortly. And then also to finalize the high level subcommittee work plan based on Chris committee feedback at last week's Chris committee meeting. We'll confirm action items and next steps and we'll wrap up your meeting as we always do with hearing public comment. So Liz, if you could advance, I'll just give everyone the times here. All right, so uh, we're getting through with the welcome introductions and review meeting agenda. I was gonna do an ice melter, but in light of the fact that Representative Orwell is gonna have to go back to the floor very shortly, I think we might just skip ahead so we can have the benefit of, of her engagement in um, our as much of our discussion as possible tonight. So we'll do some quick updates and then dive at 710 into the ad hoc work group on a vision for the crisis response system. At 7.30, we'll discuss finalizing the high-level subcommittee work plan, move into action items and next steps at 8.05, and start public comment around 8.08, .08, and adjourn before or at or before 8.30. Uh, all right, so we can <coughs> stop the share now, I think, and I'm going to, uh, we're gonna do some updates. I'm gonna turn it over to Amber Leaders for some updates for the steering committee. Thanks, Jamie. Um, just a couple of updates. First, um, uh, just some sharing of information. Uh, I wanted to make sure that the steering committee was aware that we had posted the position for the uh, behavioral health um, crisis 988 coordinator within the governor's office. Uh, that posting has been up, um, for I think, a little over a week now, and we've had a really significant response in terms of application. So I, I think we will have a number of good candidates to review. Um, I'm not entirely sure when interviews and things might start, but I just wanted to let the steering committee know that that uh, process in, is in place. So if there aren't any questions, I can move on to my next update. Okay, we'll pause there for a moment. Any questions from steering committee members? Okay, and looks like Andrea's back. Yay, Andrea, so she'll be taking over momentarily. <clears throat> All right, Amber, you can move on, I think. 
Uh, so the second one is really more uh, just sort of laying some foundation for possibly future discussion with the steering committee. Um, as many of you probably remember last spring following the work of the legislative session around 988, uh, as well as the Blake legislation, the governor issued an executive order that would create a blue ribbon commission on the intersection of crisis and behavioral health. Um, part of what that commission would do would have members appointed from the Chris committee as determined by the steering committee. And so I think um, the committee has been in place now long enough. We've, we've, we've started to gel a little bit. I think it's probably time that the steering committee start to think about um, how we want to go about that process. Uh, the executive order doesn't direct that. It really just leaves it up to the steering committee to make their own decisions about how um, we would want to do uh, appointments onto that governor commission, it calls for three Chris committee members. So I just, like I said, I mostly wanted to flag it for the committee for some future discussion uh, to start thinking about what process we might want to do uh, for that commission. So Amber, it sounds like an action item might be for our next steering committee that you, to either have a conversation about how to approach this or have some ideas for, for steering committee members to react to. Yes, I think that would be great. Um, and I would say people should also uh, feel free to reach out to me in between and, and you know, flag me with ideas, but yes, I would like to have a more robust discussion next time we get together on uh, what process we might think is appropriate for that. So any questions for Amber on that? Okay, so I think our, our orders for here are to think about what that process might look like and get in touch with Amber if you have any ideas. We'll, we'll make a plan to have a deeper conversation about this at our next steering committee meeting. Steering committee members, any other updates that you think are relevant that you'd like to share? All right, we're just chugging along here then. So hopefully we'll get we'll get lots of uh, time with Representative Orwell before you have to go back after your dinner break. Um, let's move on then to the ad hoc work group on the vision for the crisis response system. And I am gonna turn it over to Representative Orwell who is going to share with you um, some feedback we've heard and the next steps on that feedback. So Representative Orwell. Yes, thank you. I almost called you Madam Chair, sorry. <laughs> I'm still in my session mode. I'll answer to that, sure. <laughs> no, um, well, one, I just wanna say thank you. We have gotten so much feedback from the Chris Committee and, you know, when Senator Dingra and, and all the other um, folks worked on, on the legislation, you know, we wanted to bring uh, so many important voices to the table and, you know, people with lived experience, people that really understood how the system works and so, um, so now we're getting that feedback and we just really want to honor it. And part of the feedback we got was really to create an ad hoc group that really could look at the vision. And I really appreciate, Michelle, when you were talking about the system, right? I mean, the system existed before we got here. We're going to create something that's going to exist after we're not here. So, you know, I think um, there's so many moving parts to the work we're doing you know, we are going to talk about what's broken, um, what's working in our state across the nation, but we need that kind of solidifying vision of where we're headed. So we're all moving together in the same direction. So I know there's been some interest um, of different members of the Chris to really be part of it. It's, it's kind of that system thinking piece. And uh, my understanding is the ad hoc group will start at the end of February. And again, I think it's, a, it's an incredible opportunity to make sure that you know all the the ad hoc not the ad hoc but the subcommittees and the chris and the steering that we're all kind of coming off the same page right about where we really really want to see the system head so i'm excited about it and um again you know and michelle when you started you know we we want to create a system that's caring and responsive and you know i think we all have those values and how do we take those values of what we're looking and really put into more of a of a vision statement so i'm excited and um again is that accurate that we would be having that up and running by the end of february that is the goal rep or wall excellent thank you so and steering committee members any questions for representative orwell or the project team about this ad hoc vision committee before we do a, a vote on it. Okay, looks like you've all been pretty brought up to speed. Oh, Pasha, did you have a question? Yeah, um, I understand the ask to create this uh, group. Um, is there any clarity on 
how? Betsy, you wanna you wanna try to field that one? Um, sure. The the clarity bipasha is that we will be um, looking to Chris members. Um, who have particular interest in doing this piece of work with us and um, uh, contributing a little, a little bit of extra effort um, and that we will bring um, HMA, um, your project team will be facilitating these conversations and supporting the work to bring forward a proposal to the Chris around the vision. And we'll do that um, for the next Chris meeting, which I believe is March 15th. So um, a little bit of work behind the scenes and just really some you know, energy that folks have to contribute. Michelle. Uh, I just think this is really critical. I think we've been trying a number of different ways to really make sure we're aligned as Chris around what is the vision and the strategic direction. And there's so many, there's a lot of partners at the Chris table that are coming from really important pieces of the system. And I think um, we're not quite there yet in creating alignment around, um, around the vision. And so I think this can really help us long-term. So I'm supportive. On kind of a side note, I think something we should wrestle with at some point as a steering committee is there are a lot of ongoing ideas around different subcommittees. Um, and so I do really think at times we should think about um, criteria or a process because I do feel like there's already, uh, there's a lot for us to manage in this, in this huge work. And I think we should be really um, thoughtful and um, when we decide to have, a, to, to add a subcommittee. But this one, I mean, there, there couldn't get anything more thoughtful than um, unity on the vision. And Michelle, we're calling it an ad hoc work group to, <laughs> to really underscore this. Thank you for that. Not clear. to add another subcommittee. Yeah. Not another subcommittee. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. And then Mark. Yeah, I would just add that uh, I think that the time frame for this seems ambitious, but I think part of my thinking at least is that the vision really will be high level and it's not intended to try to define everything about the system. And then the other thing is we, we don't want too much more of the work to get done before the vision. And if we, I think, don't expedite that, uh, the need to really get the work moving uh, won't benefit from vision. And so I think uh, it's an ambitious timeline, but I think it's doable and it really is important to get it done uh, fairly quickly in the process that's starting to pick up speed. Thanks for making that point, Mark. So yes, the, the objective it sounds like would be to have this in place before we really start doing work on how to achieve the vision, right? Uh, okay, Carrie. Thank you, Jamie. Just wanted to say I, I echo both what, what Michelle and Mark just said. Um, and what Representative Orwell said to kick off this entire discussion. Um, I will say I definitely to the high level, it makes a lot of sense. And I think just keeping in mind with, with sort of how Michelle um, talked about how we started this meeting, which is, um, it, you know, everybody's got this experience and that we kind of have to be flexible and inclusive and how are we gonna do that? And so I think this gives us an avenue to make sure that we're doing that. And the one thing I would just say is, if we can all also acknowledge and give some grace around this vision, just like the reports that we're gonna be submitting and all of these things um, should be allowed to be a little bit changeable as we learn more and grow more about the system. And so I think we can keep that, that kind of directional piece to it but it would be great if we if we also just gave ourselves permission to know that that may change along the way. So I'm supportive of this um, and thankful that we're having this conversation. Thanks. I'm hearing a lot of support for this approach and also a suggestion that we give ourselves space to be flexible and adapt as, as the situation evolves and change. Okay, great. Any other comments, feedback, questions, concerns? Be a good opportunity to raise those two if you have them. Okay, so we're going to do this by a vote, just affirming um, or letting me know if you if you do not affirm this approach. Um, and I also want to let you know we checked in with Senator Dingra when she let us know that she might not make it tonight, and she said she supports uh, convening this ad hoc work group. So 
I'm gonna ask steering committee members if you could, you can actually just raise your actual hand or use the raise your hand function to let me know if you confirm that we would be convening this uh, ad hoc, <coughs> excuse me, this ad hoc work group. So here, so I see two hands up. Yeah. I know Mark's not a non-voting member in Bposh. Okay, great. Then I believe we have confirmed our convening of our ad hoc um, work group, and we will be moving forward with seating that. All right, so let's move into our discussion about finalizing the high-level subcommittee work plan. Um, so what we're going to do, well, with my, what, what I'd like to do is check in with our um, sub, I'm sorry, too many committees, our, our steering committee members. I want to um, just recap a little bit, both for our guests tonight and just to refresh our memories, some of the feedback we heard at our Chris committee meeting last February 2nd, so last Tuesday. Um, so for those of, for those guests who were not with us last Tuesday, um, our Chris committee members <coughs> received a draft high level work plan for the subcommittees that articulated a number of objectives for subcommittees to tackle. And then we asked for Chris committee feedback on that. So I thought we might take a few minutes to just uh, refresh our memories and all come on the same page about what we heard last week. So I'm gonna ask steering committee members if you could um, share with me some of the key takeaways from those discussions we had last week that you remember. Uh, Michelle, I don't know if that hand was up from when you voted or if that's a hand now, but uh, okay. So you can take a minute to sort of reset your mind back to last week and it looks like Amber is ready to go. So Amber. Well, I, and I'm going to take the easy one just because I remember basically everyone said it was a discussion about where's our, where are our points on workforce um, and how does that relate to what we're doing here? Um, I think everyone on this uh, steering committee knows that, you know, behavioral health workforce is a real need. Uh, there's a big emphasis on it and during this legislative session and in the governor's budget. And I think pretty much every group, if I remember right, uh, called out, you know, where's workforce in this plan? And I'll acknowledge because I was facilitating in the main room with our guests that that was also a major theme amongst our community members too. So there was a lot of consistency between what our community members were saying and what you were hearing in the Chris community rooms. Carrie. Thank you. I was having to make a note so I didn't forget my, I have kind of two, I think that really stuck out for me was um, the appreciation for braided funding, blended funding, whatever kind of term you want to use for it, and really being inclusive of um, all of the different kind of funding mechanisms that feed into the system and how we can really take all of those into account. So I appreciated that there were, were conversations around that. And what I really appreciated the most, I think, that I have heard folks say for a long time, um, and I'm excited that we made some adjustments on this in an action, or we're looking at that is around the definitions and making sure that we're all kind of operating from that same sheet of music. And so that was a really, I think, good one that I heard a lot of the, um, in my group and a lot of the other ones during the report out say. And I'll just add some of that, again, echoing the braided funding comment in the, um, in the main room with our community members, that was something that came up as well. Um, and your point about definitions is something we've heard a few times. So thank you for raising that one again. Michelle. Yeah, I just um, first want to echo the workforce comment and was really glad. I think I saw that there's a new objective um, added about this. I mean, it is um, as we work with the three member call centers, which is really the first place of um, the system we're working on designing they're really talking about the challenges to recruit and retain staff. And I think that is gonna be, and we're also hearing them talk, and I think it came up last week about the challenges of worrying about just moving staff from different parts of the system around um, and knowing how tight the workforce is right now in behavioral health, public health, healthcare, social services. It is um, just thinking about what do we do to continue to strengthen that. So really glad to see that, to hear that discussion and see it called out. Um, one other thing, I think we kind of heard some things about that resonated for us was just communication. And I think it gets back to this 
subcommittee or the ad hoc work group, is that what we're calling it? <laughs> um, but I think just the complexity of this project, which involves so many state agencies, diverse partners, community members, people with lived experience, people from um, different groups who've um, experienced um, trauma disproportionately, a lot of different things that we, um, how, how do we all stay on top of the complexity and really think about um, what it all means and do we have a shared understanding and are we reaching and inviting people in in all the right ways. So just something I think that was um, a, a, a good call out from the comments as well. Thanks, Michelle. Vipasha. Um, I think two things, um, I'll bring up the issue of cultural and diverse representation, not just as an afterthought in the bullet points, but to be integrate that into that was brought up by other people emphatically, because I think it makes a difference when you read that word or those two words, diversity, cultural representation over and over again, it has an impact on the brain differently than one sentence at the bottom. And the other thing that um, for me, which I didn't really know much about is the participation of private health insurance in this process. And that was something that came up and it kind of worried me that we're doing all this work when there are enough people that have private insurance, not everyone's covered by Medicaid in the state. And what uh, that sector of the state is going to do into paying towards a building a system that is equitable for everybody. And definitely their patients, if their clients or customers tap into you know, the public mental health system. Thanks for raising those, Vipasha. And, and I, I do want to circle back, especially to the part you made, the point you made about um, <clears throat> making sure that we are weaving uh, thoughtfulness about um, cultural representation and um, cultural um, attuneness to throughout all of the objectives. And I also want to add that I, I recall what an, a, I also heard when that was discussed, uh, recognition of tribal sovereignty throughout as well, not just with the tribal subcommittee, but with all the other objectives. So I see some nodding heads. It sounds like I'm remembering that correctly too. Thanks for bringing that one up. Representative Orwell. Yes, thank you. These are great uh, comments. I, I remember really people wanting to have that clear communication and to really know that they had kind of a voice at the table I think they're just uh, we're feeling a little disconnected, and I just have to say um, that was an excellent meeting, and I, I it was so helpful for me to to hear so many comments from the different members. I also heard about just the real worry that around 988 and 911, and things are moving quickly, right? We have the system coming quick, and how do we communicate it not only amongst ourselves but to the community, and so. You know, again, I, I just, I think it was excellent feedback and, and very interactive. Thank you. I'm glad you brought up the worries that people were expressing around 988 and 911 because I also remember some specifics coming up around like um, disaster preparedness, for example, and having a, having a plan ready so that people could still get their, get services even if um, we've run into an earthquake or something else. And also uh, interoperability came up a lot. So um, thank you, Representative Orwell, for bringing that up. Any other um, points that you remember? I think Betsy can fill in any, any gaps too that we didn't cover. You guys came up with a lot. That was a lot to remember. Oh, Bipasha, you, you remembered another one? Um, just, I think there's some concern about the federal platform and whether the local crisis hubs, since they're the ones that will go active first in July, because they have to take the call starting July. And so that concern of if, I think if the federal platform is not ready, because they don't, they seem to not quite be hitting their targets, you know, um, is it, I forget the name of the agency, I forgot, um, I'm sorry, that um, is developing the technical platform for answering calls. Do you remember the name of the agency? Jane? Yeah, it's Vibrant on behalf. Vibrant. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Vibrant. Yes. So yes, the Vibrant platform and what if that's not ready since they are already behind on their targets. I think that seems to be a 
recurring concern for many people. Worries about things that feel a little bit outside of, of their control. So yeah, yeah. Doug, so thanks for remembering that one. Um, Betsy, are there any that that you're recalling or that you were <clears throat> that you were reflecting on as you were making uh, proposed edits to the work plan that you want to make sure we call out? Um, yeah, I. Um, this is these are really good call outs. What I was thinking about a lot after the meeting is the the question of timelines and the the um, kind of concurrent work. Um, we had initially spoken to timelines because um, a little bit as related to the legislation. And folks had concerns that that meant we wouldn't start certain things until later, you know, down the road. So um, you'll see when I go over the work plan how we've remedied that issue. Um, but I, th I think the the theme for me was that there's a lot of interconnectedness here, and we need to really represent how this how all of these pieces represent a system at the end. Looks like now might be a good time to maybe go through the work plan and uh, show steering committee members how we took the feedback that we heard at the Chris committee last week and then proposed some modifications to the work plan. Okay, we've got the work plan up. So I'm gonna go through um, uh, an explanation of uh, um, what we did to update the work plan based on input by the Chris committee um, as highlighted in yellow in this document. Um, and just to remind you, and we've spoken to this a little bit uh, earlier on, the work plan, the high level work plan will help to lay the foundation for our work ahead and align work by the state agencies, so DOH and HCA, and input by subcommittees and the CRIS committee. So this is our, our blueprint or roadmap, if you will, um, to help us make sure that we're capturing elements of the system along the continuum. Um, and it is a, a mutable document. So as all things in this process that's very complex, um, it's subject to change um, as we learn and grow together. Um, so the first um, item that I'll highlight is um, that we provided some clarity regarding timelines, what I was just speaking to. We heard requests for more clarity regarding the timelines for these objectives, especially for critical path issues, such as the 2023 legislative session. Specific timelines will be developed for work on each objective. For purposes of the high level work plan, we remove the timelines to keep a focus on the work that needs to be accomplished. We'll come back with a more detailed timeline and process for bringing these objectives through subcommittees for input. The second item that we responded to is cultural responsiveness. We integrated language throughout the document to highlight the need for culturally responsive care tailored to the needs of diverse populations. We also added language uh, around regional crisis call centers, <clears throat> excuse me, to explicitly recognize the call centers at the regional level, level excuse me, and further um, discuss, uh, provide further discussion of roles and coordination. Call center hub technology, objective 1.7. Um, in that objective, we added language regarding the development of a call center hub technology to include disaster preparedness plans and compliance with data privacy and security laws, including text and web-based data sharing. The next thing we, we amended was around coordination with law enforcement and emergency departments, adding language to more explicitly recognize coordination with law enforcement, emergency departments, and other system partners. For crisis stabilization services, we heard that the term crisis stabilization services was too limited and um, we added language to indicate a broad range of walk-in and crisis stabilization services, including but not limited to peer-run services and peer-run respite centers. We added a new objective around tribal sovereignty to ensure that the crisis system is designed in a manner that respects the existing processes and governing bodies of tribal government, governments to address tribal behavioral health and crisis system needs and gaps. Braided funding, we added, we identified more specific um, sources of funding, including the use of Medicaid, Medicare, commercial, local dollars, and other, uh, and other dollars. And then finally, workforce, we added a new objective to address workforce in um, across these objectives. 
So as I mentioned, we consider the work plan a living document that may be updated as we continue to identify the work needed. And we will also update the work plan to align with the vision developed by the ad hoc work group and the CRIS. Thank you, Betsy. So we're looking now to our steering committee for feedback on the changes that were made to the proposed work plan. I see Michelle, you have your hand up. Yeah, I think these look great. Um, I caught one thing on 5.7, the workforce objective. Um, if we could pull that up, but it talks about minimum licensure and education. Can we add training to that? Because I do think some for peer, um, it um, may not be education or licensure. It may be training. So that was one thing we thought um, to just clarify the, the wording there. That's a great point, Michelle. And I um, just wanna echo that again in the main room, there was a lot of talk about how you broaden um, the tent for who we're including in in the work for what we consider to be a workforce that language is, is a good suggestion other feedback from our steering committee members on these changes here amber yeah while we're on the workforce one um the blue header that's above it can i just ask is this are we talking okay i think it's talking mostly about crisis so one of the things i might say about this workforce comment is that part of what we need to do is not just support the workforce within the crisis system, but in the behavioral health system generally, um, right? That's gonna be really important to having a successful crisis system is that we also have a community behavioral health system and other parts of our behavioral health system that also has a robust workforce. So I just might, I don't know if we need to add a little specificity there. Again, since the title of the objective five is really about the crisis system, whether in 5.7, we should add some clarity that this is really about supporting the entire existing workforce within behavioral health. Not that Chris is tasked with doing that, but that it is an important feature of, of the plan. Yeah, Amber, I appreciate what you said about, not that the Chris is responsible for doing that, but that's, it's a component of the Chris, what the Chris is focused on or what this process is focused on. Other feedback, steering committee members on the work plan. Do these changes generally look like they met your expectations in terms of addressing Chris committee feedback? Anything you think we missed? Well, we um, also got Senator Dingra's thumb up, thumbs up on this one. Um, she had a chance to review the proposed changes as well as <clears throat> summary of feedback from the Chris committee. So um, with that, then I'll do another similar um, vote from our voting members. And, and folks, it was my, my bad at the last one. I forgot to remind everyone um, I know our steering committee members know <clears throat> our voting and non-voting members, but it's probably useful for our guests to know too that Amber, Michelle, Representative Orwell, Senator Dingra, and um, Carrie are voting members of our steering committee. Vipasha and Mark are non-voting members of our steering committee, but very valued contributors to our steering committee. So let's not forget that for sure. Um, so uh, those four steering committee members who are voting tonight um, if you could just show me by your, your real hand or your um, avatar hand, that we will approve this subcommittee work plan. And we also have one from Senator Dingra, so that's great. Um, oh, Representative Orwell, looks like you had a question or a comment. Yeah, and, and my apologies. I know um, I'm trying to remember if it's this document and another one, you know, one of our um, things we have to have established is the next day appointments by January, 2023, which is both on the Medicaid and private insurance side. And so I don't know if that would make the high level plan, but somehow has to be captured somewhere. Betsy, are there any thoughts on that or is that just- Well, what I was thinking, Jamie, is that we do have it captured in the subcommittee tasks, Rep. Orwell. So 
we had done a, a side by side from the legislation uh, and a, um, a crosswalk to subcommittee work. So we will either, if this is okay with you, um, friendly amendment to either uh, make sure that we're capturing it as a subcommittee assignment in one of those charters or we'll include it here. Michelle, is that a hand up or is that from your vote? No. Great. Okay, Betsy, maybe you could share uh, next steps with this work plan. What's happening? Oh, and I'm I'm getting um, I'm getting pinged that there's a correction. Um, thank you, my project team. It is in the work plan, evidently, rapport wall. The next day appointments. So, Betsy, would you go ahead and just brief our steering committee members and guests on next steps for these work? Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so, as um, as the next step with the um, the high level work plan, the project team is going to develop subcommittee charters that outline specific charges, tasks, and roles for the subcommittees in relation to the high level work plan. Um, as part of this work, we're developing a process map for the full continuum of crisis response services as framed by this work plan. The process map will essentially outline what the current process looks like, what the future process should look like, um, meeting with best practices and vision incorporated, and then under an understanding of the delta between um, the, the current state, the current process and the future process, um, outlining what needs to happen. Um, we'll be tapping Chris members, agencies, and other system experts to help in the development of this process map. We're starting this work immediately. So alongside the vision work that we're doing, we're going to be starting um, process mapping work to really give, a, give ourselves the foundation for that interconnected um, continuum of services that lead us towards the vision of a redesigned system. The process map will provide a platform to weave together all of the various tactical elements and perspectives that our subcommittees um, uh, are working on to provide input so that we're developing recommendations in a cohesive and integrated manner. We'll release a subcommittee calendar of meetings at the end of next week. I know that members of the subcommittee are eager to get started um, and uh, to do so, we have to accomplish this step to make sure that we can organize the work of subcommittees and give clear direction. Um, so Jamie, that's what we've got going on right now. Um, lots of work behind the scenes and we'll be kicking off um, these work groups and um, the subcommittee processes very soon. Okay, well, before we move on, uh, steering committee members, any questions about next steps? Feedback, feel good about what we're doing next? Okay, I want to give a shout out to our, um, I want to echo uh, what Representative Orwell said earlier um, and others have said earlier about the Chris committee member discussions, the Chris committee discussions last week, which I think um, have made this a better work plan uh, and really gave us some good feedback. So for those Chris committee members who are here tonight, Big thank you to all of you for your contributions last week to making this work plan a really good one. All right, well, believe it or not, we were super efficient tonight and we were able to get all of our business done before Representative Orwell has to return to the floor. Um, so next step is going to be moving into our public comment period, um, which we do at the end of these meetings. Um, so I'm going to, first of all, just remind um, our, guests and steering committee members about our process for public comment, and then we'll get started. So Liz, if you could share that slide deck again and put up the slides on public comment, that would be great. Oh, I'm sorry, I totally skipped a really key point there, which is actually, Liz, I apologize. If you could go back to action items and next steps. Um, Betsy just talked about next steps for um, the work plan. We also have next steps, as we mentioned earlier, getting the ad hoc work group on the vision to advise the steering committee on the vision going by the end of February. So that's happening. Um, Betsy, are there any other action items we should mention here? I don't think so, Jamie. I do have one, which is a reminder that we have some homework from Amber 
to think about um, the process for identifying members for the Blue Ribbon Commission for our next steering committee meeting. So, okay, wonderful. So let's move to the next slide, Liz. All right, so uh, a reminder to everyone about how we do public comment since it's been a little while. Um, <clears throat> we're, going to, we're, we're going to invite each person to speak in the order that they show up on the screen. I have had a couple of people let us know that they are withdrawing from comments. So this list is not completely current. I have a more current list on my own screen here. Uh, and we're also gonna be checking because I, I, I do see that there are a few names up here. Um, folks may not have been able to stay or may, may have not been able to show up for the meeting after all. So there are a few people on this list who are not here tonight. Uh, and in fact, I did a quick count that I think five people on the list are here tonight. So that means we can do the full two minutes. Each person who's speaking tonight will have two full minutes. I will put a timer on the screen. Um, I'm going to ask you, uh, people who are making public comment tonight, to please stick to that two minutes, watch that timer. I am going to interrupt your comment when that timer ends and ask you to wrap up. And uh, this is really important <laughs> for consistency, um, but uh, shouldn't be um, too difficult to be able to keep time with the timer on the screen. Uh, you did receive uh, information from us about the general rules for making public comments, so should be feel not familiar with that. And please do forgive me. I'm gonna do my very best to pronounce your names correctly. Um, but if I mispronounce your name, uh, please correct me when you start your comment, if you could state your full name before you start making your comment. And finally, if you have written versions of your comments, please, if you can email them to the email address that I put in the chat earlier, it just helps us to make sure that we fully capture your comment. Also wanna make a reminder to everyone, all of our guests tonight, um, making a public comment is one way of sharing your feedback uh, with our steering committee and our Chris committee. But if you are not, if you're not feeling comfortable speaking on a camera or you prefer to express yourself in writing, please do um, feel free to send a comment via writing. We actually compile all those comments and share them with our Chris committee members uh, before <coughs> Chris committee meetings. So they have an opportunity to review those. Uh, so we don't weigh comments in the meeting any differently from comments that we get via email. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get started. <coughs> um, I'm going to just do a quick check with Liz, uh, who's checking the, um, who's checking the participant list to confirm sure. who the, the first person I see is Elizabeth Ross. Okay, so Elizabeth Ross, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'll call three names. And um, so Elizabeth Ross will be the first person to speak and the other two will sort of be on deck, prepared to speak. So Elizabeth Ross, followed by Cora Belgard, followed by, by Charlize Hammond. And Liz, if you could stop the share, I'm going to share the timer. Great. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Ross. Um, just one moment, Elizabeth. Hold on. Let me just get the timer up. I apologize. My. All right. Can you see the timer, Elizabeth? Yes. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start it and you can state your name. Thanks so much. Go right ahead. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Ross. Um, I was invited to be part of this um, meeting as just a member of the community. I also have lived experience. I sent a written comment to um, Jamie already, but uh, I'll briefly summarize that I didn't hear anything about us specifically supporting teens and youth with our crisis services, but I think a special subsection for that would be helpful, um, specifically ones who are stuck at home um, caregiving for people with disabilities during this pandemic. So, um, and I provided an example in my uh, uh, comment that I sent to Jamie. Thanks. Thank you, Elizabeth. And forgive me, I just have too many screens up. So I'm gonna bear with me. Just the, next, the next speaker is Daniel. Okay. I am having a little trouble with my screens here. Can you still see the timer? I just want to make sure because I'm, I'm looking at my name list as well. Yes. Okay. It's at 113. It's okay. Daniel followed by Laurel. Okay. Thank okay. you. So Daniel followed by Laurel followed by, so excuse me, Daniel Farber 
followed by Laurel Lemke, followed by Sarah Cheesner. So let's start with Daniel. And Daniel, let me know when you're ready, and I will start the timer. I am ready. All right, let's do it. Uh, good evening. My name is Daniel Farber. I live in Olympia. Um, my interest here is as a crisis clinic volunteer at the local Thurston Mason Crisis Clinic. In reading HB 4, uh, 1477 and looking at, um, uh, as you're exp uh, trying to deal with implementation, it's, it's my understanding that you're standing up essentially three crisis lines statewide uh, to handle the 988 call starting up in July. And I'm concerned about the potential impact on other crisis lines like ours. Um, um, it's, it can be seen as a competition in terms of uh, lines, but also clearly, uh, the 988 system is a is an advantage. Uh, it's something that's really good that we're we're doing this. But I'm concerned about the potential impact, both financial, organizationally, uh, and I'm hopeful that you'll take that into consideration. I also would like to have the opportunity to talk to somebody. I've, I've tried several times, but to talk to somebody uh, who's knowledgeable about the systems thinking that you're talking about, I was listening to in this in this presentation, and understanding how you're doing systems thinking with some of these local services where the larger lines may not have access to resource and referral a knowledge of local communities. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. So next up we have Laurel Lemke followed by Sarah Cheesmore and then Autumn Nolan. So Laurel, when you're ready, I'll go ahead and start the timer. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm Laurel Lemke, person with lived experience and professional experience. Um, I am glad that to hear, I don't know all the details, but that their peer resources are being involved, including respite centers and making sure training's involved. I've been working on the Washington Listens helpline, support line during COVID, and also been part of a national warm line council. And I want to say that there's this stress, the role of warm line peers as well. And the fact that working with the um, Washington Listens we are part of the crisis connections and it's been very good. There are many different calls people can call, many different lines you can call, but at least we have the ability to transfer lines if there's, in, if there's in a true crisis. So anyway, I think there's a lot of flexibility between the lines and um, thank you. Thank you, Laurel. Jamie, Jamie Sarah has left. So Sarah Teesmore has left. Okay. Yes. So we have Laurel and then Laura Vantosh. Okay. So no Autumn, Sina, or Brenda then. Um, no, that's no, okay. Well. All right. So Laura Vantosh is our last person signed up. So since we're quite early, I will offer an opportunity for other guests to make public comment if they'd like to tonight. But Laura, you are first. So let me know when you're ready and I'll start the timer. Laura, are you still with us? Uh, this is Laura Van Tosh, but I can't hear you. Oh, we can hear you. Okay. Um, you ready? Thank you. My name is Laura Van Tosh, and I live in Seattle, Washington. I want to first tip my hat off uh, to um, Representative Orwell, who I greatly admire and know that she is um, working on cutting edge issues. My comments um, are my own alone, but I know that others um, will concur with some of my remarks. At a meeting this week where one of our brand new crisis stabilization units was on screen to kick off a national weekly dialogue, I gulped. The reliance of using CSUs worries me. Where there's a facility, it seems in Washington state, it must be used. What are the pathways to using a CSU? What crisis prevention services will be in place that doesn't necessarily steer a crisis to a CSU? If we are anticipating crises in Washington, what are we anticipating to stem the tide? What tools will be in place like mobile crisis units, peer respites, which are inherently recovery focused? Talk of community-based non-facility services seems quiet. Mobile peer support that is available at home or at community-based programs must not be at a high level, but planned from the ground up. Focus should be on preventing crises from happening to start. This needs a multi-level discussion with plans. Thank you. 
Thank you, Laura. Um, if there are other guests who did not have an opportunity to sign up to make a public comment or would like to make one tonight, if you use the raise your hand function, I can take some more comments. We do have some time. Okay, I'm not seeing any raise your hands. I do want to remind folks again, if you do have a comment that you would like to share with, oh, I do see someone, just a moment. Katrina Kessler. Katrina, I'm going to reset the timer. And then when you're ready, if you could turn on your camera, if you, if you can't, that's fine. Um, but you can unmute yourself and make a comment. All right, let me know when you're ready. I am ready. Okay. Um, yeah, I just sent an email and I just was wondering as I was listening to the meta level plan or the structure, um, just curious, are you going to be doing research during the process to measure how things are going? And um, is there a certain like modality or um, theory that's being applied or um, is it a combination of different modalities? So Katrina, just to be clear, this is a public comment period. So making comment, but our steering committee members aren't responding or answering questions at this one. If you, oh, okay. Sorry, yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just, okay, I should have yeah. mentioned that again. It was I just a, yeah, it was just like a question. I was just curious about, you know, the modality. And the well, you did exactly the right it. thing, which is to send it in by email. And we're, we are working on FAQs. So we, we can, um, uh, Okay. You're looking okay. to responding to that question, but okay. I apologize for the Sorry confusion. about that. Okay. No, appreciate your, I appreciate you <laughs> bravely getting on screen. <laughs> um, anyone else have any public comments to make right now? You can use your raise the hand function. <coughs> Excuse me, well, we're, we're ending at just the right time then because my voice is about to go out here. Um, I'm going to stop my share and uh, Betsy, do you have any final words to say? We're, we, we're giving everybody an hour back in their evening, which I know is probably a, a, a blessing for many of you. Um, Betsy, do you have any final words to share with our steering committee members? Um, no, it's um, very exciting to get an hour back. I, I guess the Olympics are on, so people can go back to their Olympics watching. Um, we will be in touch with um, Chris members about our ad hoc processes, um, so more to come. Um, just want you all to know that that's, you know, we're, we're forming still and we will be reaching out. Um, and that's all Jamie from me. Thanks. Okay. Well, it was good to see all of you, uh, twice in a week and a half. Um, wish you all a good rest of your winter, good health, and we'll be seeing you, uh, soon at our next Chris community meetings. Thank you. And thank you guests for being with us tonight. Um, I, I know it's a later meeting than we normally do. Um, and we really appreciate you making the time uh, and the commitment to be part of this process. And I wish you all a good evening. Thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.